All right, today, got a new compressor for the shop. Let's check it out, see what I got. All right, before I get to the new one, here's the old one. This is a one from Harbor Freight. I used to have an old DeVilbus one. I really liked that one. Um, but I was in a pinch. I needed a new compressor several years ago. And I ran out, of course, Harbor Freight, you know, down the street, ran out and got this one. And it's worked fine. Um, but I wanted something a little bit bigger, a little bit better. Um, this one is a 26 gallon, if I remember correctly. And it puts out, or it's, I think it's 1.6 horsepower. I might be wrong on that. Um, 1.5, 1.6 horsepower right around there. Goes up to 150 PSI. And the CFM at 90 PSI is 4.0. So I wanted to do a little bit better than that. Also, this one is oil-free, so there's no maintenance on it, but it's really loud. When you have the oil-free ones, they're really loud. So let's check out what I am replacing it with. All right, there she is. There's the new compressor. Pay no attention to this CRV I'm working on. Uh, I went with the DeWalt. This one is made in USA with global components. I, I really wanted to try to find a made in USA air compressor. I still needed it to be portable. I needed it to be portable like that with wheels so I can move it in and out. I can't put a stationary one there. So I went with this model and this is a two horsepower. This one goes up to 200 PSI. It is oil lubed and it's a 25 gallon if you can read that and vertical uh, portable. Model number on this one DXCM251. Um, in addition to the unit I got a lead-in hose by DeWalt, got to have the matching yellow, right? And we also got a 50-foot um, air hose from DeWalt that'll match. And I'm switching over all my um, couplers. We're going to go with Milton, made in USA M style. So I got a couple of packs of those, so I'm going to switch over all my stuff from the old Cheap Harbor Freight. We're going with made in USA Milton. And what the heck, I threw this in there too from Milton. This is a uh, air chuck, um, digital one, really nice, really expensive. I wanted a super accurate one. I, I got pissed off at mine the other day because it wasn't very accurate. Um, and I was having to go and double and triple check the tire pressure. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm just getting another one. I'm getting a good one. So this one is supposed to be really, really accurate. Also made in the USA with US and global components. So, well, let's get this stuff out of the box. Check it out. And in case I forgot to mention it, this new one puts out 6.1 CFM at 90 PSI. Compared to the old one at 4.0 at 90 PSI, that's a decent increase. And this one is oil lubed, so it should definitely be quieter than the old one. I don't worry too much about the noise, but that one was pretty obnoxious, I have to admit. Sorry, got to turn the cooler on. It's hot out today. And if you're curious, that's how it sits in there. Just has the plastic on there. And then this with the little styrofoam pieces is enclosed all the way around and then this box has a hole on the bottom and it just sits over the top now this piece was sitting here but I found it in several pieces so I think it's it was just there for shipping to uh, stop the box from being pressed down on this but this broke but I don't see any damage on the actual unit but that's what she looks like so far Nice, this unit comes with the old tip and tilt. So when you see blue all the way up here, especially in the top of the arrow, that means they tipped it over, mishandled it. Now I did this, pulling the box top off. This is just the, the box top, but that's pretty cool they put these on here. All right, there they are side by side. This one's gonna be a little bit taller and a little bit wider, because this one, of course, is oil loop. So we got a belt we have to take care of. We gotta change the oil on it every once in a while. Um, but. They're close to similar size, since that's a 26 gallon, this is a 25. You can always tell when something's made in the USA. They like to plaster that stuff on there. This one has uh, pneumatic tires, where that one just has a solid rubber one. Eh, I, I probably prefer the solid rubber, you can't have a flat on those. Uh, or these you can get a flat, so. I always thought it was weird though that Harbor Freight, you know, we got our regulator and pressure over here and the on off is up on this side but yet the handle and the wheels are on the other side totally backwards to me because you see how I have it set in there sure would be nice to have the handle right there in case I need to pull it out well, that's how DeWalt sets their stuff up we got our regulator and everything right here so we can move it out the airs on the other side compared to this one goes that way no big deal but there's our stats 25 gallons like I said 200 PSI 
I couldn't remember. I can't remember if I told you or if I misspoke. I thought it was 6.1, but it's actually 6.2 CFM compared to a 4.0 on that one. So definitely a big improvement going with the DeWalt. And this thing runs on standard household voltage. You can see the plug right there. Uh, takes SAE 30 weight oil, and I'm sure there's some kind of break-in period. Um, so we'll probably have to run this for 30 minutes with the valve open, something like that, and make sure it has oil in it. Uh, what's nice is it does have a sight glass for oil. That's a very nice feature. Uh, let's look at our tag here. What do we got? Of course, we know it's 200 PSI, 6.2 at 90, 7.7 uh, .7 CFM at 40. PSI that's nice I mean so that definitely puts out a decent amount for a portable unit this is more like the old school ones used to for some reason they went to these smaller you know 1.5 or 2.0 horsepower and they don't put out the CFM that the old um, smaller you know five horsepower ones that were 25 and 30 gallons that you could get 20 25 years ago I don't know why they did that but that's what they did and let's see what other features do we have uh, you can read them right there. You can pause it. I'll let you just check that out. Now, although it has the DeWalt name on there, they're not actually made by DeWalt. They're actually put together by Matt Industries. So they're the ones who manufacture these. It's just under a license from DeWalt, in case you didn't know. Definitely a big difference in weight on these two things. This is roughly 150 pounds, where this is less than 100. And it was definitely time to replace these old hoses. Well, there she is, all installed and hooked up. Got the hose on there too. Um, it did require a 30 minute break in period with the valves open, I did that. Now I got it all fired up and I was using it for a little bit. Works good, no leaks. Definitely quieter than the old one, but it's an air compressor, they're loud. Um, it did uh, cut off just a hair under 200, like maybe 199, 198 PSI. And then I tested it and I brought it down and the compressor kicked on at about 150 and brought it back up to 200. So no issues there, I like that. Um, this regulator, very nice, very smooth and you can really fine tune it, much better than the old Harbor Freight I had. And what's nice is with this one, when you get it into a position you want, you can lock it or you can leave it unlocked. Kind of a nice feature. This hose is very soft and pliable, I definitely like it. Although I'm not sure I like these little connectors on the end we'll see if I don't pull those off I did pull the other one off to get this mounted on here because it, it didn't like that bend so I pulled it off the other side but everything's on no leaks everything's good um, I do need to pin this right there just so it stays out of my way it's okay right now but for permanent I definitely need to pin it there but I need one more of these can you believe I don't have something in stock and testing out these Milton connectors, very solid, secure, wiggling them around, no leaks. I definitely like that. The other ones, as soon as I put a little pressure on there, they leak. Um, this thing's pretty cool. I don't know if you noticed, but it turned on automatically as soon as it sensed the uh, air pressure. And this, and it has an unheard of 0.05% accuracy. That's 0.05 accuracy, and this is the certification for it. So that's pretty darn accurate. Um, there's the chuck that I got. You can put different styles on there, but that's the kind of the standard one that I put on. And what's nice is if you hold it this way, it reads the PSI like that. If you turn it, the PSI will turn that way. And if you have it that way, it'll turn the other way. So that's pretty darn neat the way it does that. Um, recognizes it and is able to turn like that. Pretty cool. Um, we'll see how, how much I like it, but definitely like it so far the only thing I don't like on it where is it the battery goes under here and it's just a little cheap well I can't say it's cheap but it's just a little plastic cover the plastic actually feels like it's well made like it's like nylon reinforced or something but you have to press it down and then put a screw in now luckily the screw is going into metal we'll see how it lasts but that's definitely a weak point but you know reading the uh, material it says it's made for you know heavy-duty use and be thrown around the shop so We'll see, and we'll check the accuracy on here. Check the tire pressure, and we're at 29.88 PSI. And this this one should be at 30. Now, if it was too high, we can just press that button, take some out. See it dropping. 
and now we're at 28.43 so now we'll just top it back off to 30 like it should be on a cool tire 30.06 there we go one of the things I like about this is there's a decent amount of clearance here so we can get to this valve to let the condensation out moisture I'm touching it right now so it's definitely easy to get to the Harbor Freight one there wasn't as much room right there and that valve was all the way in the back so it was on the same side as the handle and of course the controls were on the opposite side so the way I had it set up so I can easily get to the controls the drain valve was all the way in the back at an angle away from you so it was a real pain I ended up putting a hose on there to bring it out to make it a little bit easier but still this design is definitely a lot better and you can see what I'm talking about where the valve is on this and here's the little hose that I installed so I could reach it out here so if any of you have a air compressor like like this and you know it's a pain in the butt you can always do something like this it definitely makes it better and this is why you want to drain them get all that water out and you can see there's some rust in there these tanks don't last forever especially if you keep them or keep the moisture in there and don't don't drain them they'll definitely rusting cause holes and holes in the bottom so we don't want to do that now DeWalt doesn't publish the duty cycle or how long you can have it on and then how long you have to have it off you know as a percentage um, but if we look at the motor right here the duty cycle on this is continuous so unless there's an issue overheating this in theory we should be able to run this thing continuously and get 6.2 PS or SCFM at 90 PSI so that's the theory anyway we just got to make sure we have enough airflow back here and that's why I have it away from the wall I want to make sure we keep this cool so we don't overheat it and damage it but at least in theory we should be able to run run this pretty hard I mean this is a contractor grade it's made to be run so that's what I plan on doing to it now even though you know this is a cheapo from Harbor Freight it still worked and I can't really complain for less than $200 it did its job I definitely got $200 worth of work out of this old thing and it still works so I'm gonna give it to my son junior so now he's gonna have an air compressor and because those other air hoses are shot luckily I had some new air hoses and we'll give those to him too well there's the new compressor hopefully she works out now I got to clean up all this mess and as always hey, if the video helped you out or you liked it make sure to give it a thumbs up thanks for watching all right for those of you that stuck around to the end I wanted to verify whether I had any leaks in the system and so I left the tank pressurized and what is that a little over 160 162 or three or so like that and my line I left pressurized at about 70 or so and it's been about 14 hours maybe a little longer since I uh, you know shut it all down and left it like this and they have not moved not budged so that means I have no leaks anywhere in here and my fittings all the way to the end right here to the coupler are not leaking so that's good before if I would leave um, my regulator open this thing would bleed off the pressure and and drain the whole tank in probably less than an hour maybe two at the most depending on how full it was so this is definitely a big improvement thanks for watching